Welcome to Power Your Profits podcast, your friendly guide in bringing your business revenue to the next level. Listen as host Susie Carter hears inspiring stories of success from her fellow entrepreneurs and transformational leaders. Prepare to make significant change to your strategies as they unravel the secrets of building multi-million dollar businesses and the most effective tips on finance, marketing, and sales accountability. If you want to make your first step towards explosive business growth, this is the right podcast for you. Without further ado, here is your host, Susie. Welcome to Power Your Profit Podcast. I'm your host, Susie Carter, and I help you find the money in your business. Today's guest is Holly Chantel. Love her name, right? She's been helping visionary visionary coaches, speakers, service professionals enroll more clients into their high ticket offers by developing the business infrastructure they need to reach the next stage of growth. At 24, she started her career as a brand and business coach and hit six figures quickly. She had hand, she had a hand in creating over 200 brands in coaching and service-based industries, from crafting the brand messaging, from authority positioning, strategic web design, sales funnels, and copywriting. Some of her clients went on to build multi-million dollar businesses and she has created $25,000 paydays and five-figure webinars by shifting their business focus into areas they never thought would possible and never thought that people would buy that. Please welcome my guest, Holly. Oh my gosh, Holly, I'm so excited that you're here. More importantly, that our students get to glean from you, learn from you. So share with everyone, you know, I read your bio and that's awesome, but really what is your magic like what is that secret sauce that you do better than anybody else so my my magic is being able to see see the details in addition to just the big picture so there's a lot of um a lot of entrepreneurs are are visionary and a lot of my clients come to me with like this this vision for what they want even though they're not really sure how to get there or if it's even possible and I'm really good at locking in the details that can get them there. Um, so oftentimes that's looking at what is it that they want to create and and who are the people that they want to work with in the, ser- in the services that they wish they were providing, but might not be right now because they're afraid people aren't going to buy and really dialing in those details of this is exactly what you need to say. This is exactly who you're talking to. And this is what your magic is because a lot of times people can't see their own magic. And that's, that's one of the details that I can dial in pretty, pretty quickly. That's juicy. So, so many people are, you know, challenged right now with the current reality of what's happening in the world. What do you tell entrepreneurs about how do they stay in action? You know, and and business is business, right? Up, down, up, down, up, down. We just might be going in a down, so how do you help entrepreneurs inside of this and keeping them in action and growing? Yeah, that's a really good question cuz that I think that daily we're de- we're we're having challenges come up that that aren't necessarily related to our business but just things that are going on in the world that are affecting us emotionally, mentally, adding stress that we probably don't need and you have to stay in action. And so what I what I tell my clients is, you know, we we create the plan, we work the plan. And then we also need to be able to deal with our emotions and the stress and and the things that are going on because they don't go away and they are distracting. So um, one of the things that I practice is like, because being pretty empathic and intuitive, like if it's not mine, I need like, let it go. Right. Like, it doesn't mean I can't feel, feel the feels and like, and, and listen to what's going on and react or respond. Um, but when it comes to my business, like I need to have that separate time where it's like, if it's not mine, I need to let it go right now and focus on the actions that I need to take in order to reach my goals. Right. And the, the plans that you have for your business don't need to go out the window when a curveball is thrown your way, or it seems like the market is crashing and no one's buying. And, and that's not necessarily like, yes, on paper, the market isn't doing great. However, it doesn't mean people aren't, don't still value your services. It does not mean that your goals are now suddenly out of reach. It might mean that you have to get clearer in, in demonstrating the value of your services. It might mean that you 
Um, I mean, you're, you're the money, the money person, like it might mean that you manage your money just a little bit differently and you pay attention to numbers that you might not have paid attention to before to make sure that everything's going to flow the way it needs to, in order for you to keep moving forward. Well, I love that you teach people how to do, and this is, I see it happen all the time is we're not focusing on our ideal qualified client, right? You call it target audience. People call it avatars, right? So how do you help students right? And the suffering, if you will, uh, helping them mm-hmm. find that target audience or their avatar, or what I say is your ideal qualified client. What are some techniques mm-hmm. that you can give us, you know, so that we can evaluate? Cause I think you're right in a, in a downtime is, am I really marketing to fans or am I marketing to cl- the client that I want? Yeah. So I think there's kind of, there's <laughs> remember I'm the details person. So there's, there's a couple of <laughs> nuances there. There's the, there's the, who is the ideal qualified client? Like you're saying, like who values your services the most essentially, mm-hmm. and is, is already looking for your already leaning in. And then, um, there's also the, who, do, who do you value working with the most? Who do you want to help? And, um, so when I'm working with my folks on their target audience, we create what I call target profiles, which I think to your Point is what other people might call avatars. What I find is that in for most coaches consultants, which is who I work with, within their marketing, they are trying to market to multiple different profiles. And they're they're kind of grouping them together. They're using examples that are broad. They are um, in their copy, they're using bullets that are kind of like hitting all of the possibilities of what someone could be experiencing instead of really focusing on exactly who they want to attract. And so what we do is, is we look at their target audience as a whole, and then who are the different profiles that they would be talking to. So a a different profile might be people that are on different stages of their journey, people that are dealing with one, one specific challenge versus another specific challenge. And um, we start to create these really detailed uh, descriptions of what's going on in this person's life, uh, how, uh, what have they already tried before? How is your service going to fit in? What is it going to like detailed, tangible, what is it going to do for them? Not make their life better, not add, you know, six figures to the revenue. We're talking about like detail of like in their specific scenario, what is working with you going to do? And when you can do that, it really allows you to dial in that value of your services and describe it in a way that they feel seen, they feel heard, and they uh, they feel like you are so much clearer than anyone else they've talked to who, you know, is just trying to sell them something. Because that's something we're always on guard of, of people selling to us. And when you can really dial into um, what someone's experiencing and, and speak to them on that level, they, uh, they just connect with your marketing in a completely different way. I love that. Like, but the interesting thing is the last time we worked with, you know, you like a, you, right. We ended up with nine mm-hmm. pages of that detail. Like we were pretty clear right. there. I like, know we need more granular. I'm like, how do we get more granular? Yeah. Oh, nine pages later, granular, <laughs> yeah. which is juicy, yeah. right? Cause you start thinking so much deeper. And I think that's looking at aligning your marketing decision maker, right? Decision making mm-hmm. process buyers through the high, you know, hiring you right? To go, is this person right for me? Are they not right for me? And so do you have some ways that you can help us get clear on that person? Is it questions that you ask or how do you get us to get clearer when having students buy from us? Yeah, there's a couple like just kind of top level um, turns of phrase, phrases that help. So a lot of times I will talk to someone and say, you know, who, who do you work with? Who's your target audience? And they'll respond with anyone who, or, you know, instead of someone who, Mm -hmm. and just that turn of phrase can actually help you add specificity Mm -hmm. to who you're really looking for. Mm -hmm. Because when you're saying anyone who you're automatically going to talk generalities. Right. And when you say someone who, then you're really describing a scenario. The other way to do it is If in your target audience, you're thinking, okay, I work with someone who is doing this or this or this, or they're, they're encountering this challenge or this challenge or this challenge, separate each of those. So anytime you're saying, or 
and, and like adding like a different variation, that's a different profile. So if I'm working with someone who is starting out in their business and they are having a hard time um, getting leads or they're having a hard time finishing their website or they're having a hard time closing leads, you might say that, but each of those is a different pro a different profile because each of them has a different set of problems, a different set of things they're trying, they're trying, and a different result that they want to create. So if you can do that, it just easily allows you to take that broader audience and start segmenting it into categories that lets you create really specific offers and copy and marketing messages to that person. And it doesn't mean you have to only talk to one of them, like you're only allowed to market to one of them. It just means that in each piece of marketing you create, like if you're writing a article or you're doing a podcast interview, or you are writing a webinar, you are speaking to one at a time and it helps you really dial in your messaging and how you're describing the offer in a way that they are going to recognize themselves and be able to visualize themselves getting the result because they can kind of follow along the steps. It's all relevant to them. Right. And then when I look at you, you like to look at our businesses like a puzzle, right? I love your Mr. Potato Head analogy. So let's talk about yep. your Mr. Potato Head <laughs> analogy because it makes it so much easier. Yeah. To go, oh, I see what you see now. So let's talk about Mr. Potato Head yeah. and how does that relate to marketing and yeah. working with clients? So if you go to my website and on some of my webinars, I talk about this and, and uh, Mr. Potato Head, um, what we're talking about is like this visual of Mr. Potato Head, but all the pieces are in the wrong place. Right. And this visual comes from so many of my clients come to me already having a lot of pieces. Like I work with people that are established further along in their business and they want to double, triple the revenue without having to do anything more. We can do that really by dialing in your message. If you've been in business, if you're working with clients, chances are you already have everything we need in order to do that. And, um, it just might be in the wrong places. Uh, so when I say like it, I'm talking about like the things that you're spotlighting in your services, the things that the, the reasons why people should be hiring you, those target profiles we were just talking about. It's all in your head. If you were to be asked the right questions, you would be able to, we'd be able to draw out what those magical, what that magical combination is. So the Mr. Potato Head, like most people are starting with the wrong places, not not actually realizing they have the pieces. And then some pieces could be missing because you've never actually explored that before. So what we do is, is the way I work is I, I ask the right questions to get all of those pieces out. So we were kind of pulling all the pieces out of Mr. Potato Head, laying them out on a table where we can um, make decisions. What goes, what stays, what needs to be spotlighted um, over something else. Um, like what's going to become the thing you're known for versus what's the the um, skill or or methodology that's going to stay in your toolbox for just the right moment and all of those things. And then we reassemble Mr. Potato Head the way he's supposed to be. And sometimes there's Mr. Potato Head and then we also create like little baby potato heads that are like the sub brands. So it, it's just a different way of looking at how your messaging and your business is organized. And um, when you have that clarity, it just makes it that much easier to create your marketing. And then how do you help your clients 3X their revenue, right? You say 90 days, we can grow it three times, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's a huge promise. Uh, how, do yeah. we, how do we help clients do that? Yeah, so I have a pretty good track record that if someone's making at least 50,000 uh, a year, um, so that's like, between 3,500 and 5,000 a month, we can triple that within 90 days. And how we do that is simply by changing the way they're talking about their offers. So if you're, because the, my, the assumption here is that if you're doing 35 to $5,000 a month, you're already having conversations with people that are interested in working with you, whether they be from referrals, whether they be um, your, from your online marketing. And ideally, if you have any kind of audience, whether it be a Facebook group or your email list or, or even um, like your LinkedIn following, again, you have an audience that if we were to put more effective language in front of, you're going to get more people raising their hands to work with you. Um, the other thing I find is that at that, that income range, I find that a lot of people are undercharging for their services because they probably still have the same pricing that they did when they started or very similar. Yeah. And 
sometimes like we need to make sure that they're charging an appropriate amount. So a lot of times that revenue jump is from just charging an appropriate amount for their services and then having the messaging to support it. So we're getting more people raising their hands. We're charging more for the product or service. And um, that's resulting in, you know, probably not a lot of more sales. Like, you know, we might be increasing sales by like 50%. So if you're working with four clients at a time now, maybe you have six, right. but you're, you're, they're working with you for two, three times as much, which is what, where that revenue jump comes from. Yeah. That I find that people do that too. Like what is, what does Holly charge? What does Susie charge? What does Bob charge? Okay. I'm going to charge this. Uh, no, who cares what they charge? Does anything to do with exactly. Your- You'd be surprised. <laughs> right. You'd be so surprised what your that. potential is like for yourself. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Oh, I didn't know I could charge that. Right. And so what would you say? Cause I, I always look at my best lessons have been when I've not done it right. Right. Or I failed. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. Don't want to do it. I can talk about it after and I won't talk about it while I'm in it. So what would you say you're a personal mm-hmm. in growing your brand? Cause you've been doing this for a long time, mm-hmm. right? What has been one of the biggest lessons that you've learned, you know, from either your failure or doing it wrong, however you want to call it. And what was that? And then what'd you learn? I had these on in the spot examples. Uh, they always throw me um, because like my brain goes like, oh, there's all these things. Um, so <laughs> I <one>. think <laughs> one of them, yeah. I mean, I've been in business for over 10 years now and there's been challenges. There's, there's lessons learned. Um, so I would say the, like the biggest one that comes to mind is hedging my bets too much. So when I started my business, I ran my business extremely intuitively. Um, I was in my, you know, early mid twenties, I was fresh out of school and, um, I hadn't, I hadn't failed yet. Right. (laughs) And I, so I, I, you know, I, I got six figures within my first 18 months. I, you know, was, was killing it and on my way to seven figures by the time I was 30. So things were great. Then I had kids. And that just shook things up because I um, assumed, and this is like that, that yes. naivety of being in your twenties, <laughs> I assumed I could still like produce and work the same amount that I was. And uh, that just wasn't possible. You can't do the same on four hours of sleep that you can do on your eight hours. <laughs> it's like, it's just not possible. Let alone the fact that you have a a, a being um, that you're responsible for. So that caused a lot of, uh, a lot of challenges in that I stopped listening to myself because as I was shifting into my role as a parent, as a parent, you question everything because, you know, you're responsible for this being. And I also started questioning my decisions in my business. And so it took me a couple of years to realize that I had moved out of my intuit, like running my business by intuition. And instead I was running it through fear and I was really hedging everything. I was, I was not willing to take risks. I was not willing to, cause I was so afraid I was going to put all that energy into something and then I have it not work out. Yeah. And that just like, it destroyed my confidence. It made me uh, play a lot smaller than I, I could have been, even with the reduced hours that I was able to work. Um, and once I, and I've, I've gone, I've learned this lesson a few times, um, going all in, in the direction that you feel really passionate about and, letting, like letting yourself play full out makes such a big difference. And so now, you know, fast forward, I have three kids. I work 20 hours a week. I am still producing the same revenue that I did back then. And it's, it's, and I'm doing it all because I'm, I'm running my business intuitively. I'm running my business, like following, following the dopamine, following what I'm passionate about and what excites me rather than, you know, what the safe bet is. And when you do that, it excites your audience. They want to fall, like they, right. they want to follow you on that path. And, um, it's just a, it's a much more satisfying way to run your business. It is I, like, I've made some decisions and my team's like, why are we doing this? I'm like, it's a God thing, right? That's that good yeah. thing. That's that. I don't know. Like, it does may not make sense to you, but it makes sense for me and I'm doing it right. And it's always worked yeah, out, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, whether it's a risk or whether it's another, you know, a different coach or a program that's going to help me excel or have me look at my business differently. Sometimes it's just having a coach like you saying, 
No, let's look at it this way, right? That's the value. You're yeah. going to pay for it one way or another. You're going to pay someone to support you. Like, let's shave 10 years mm -hmm. off your learning curve. You have that 10 years of experience. So for somebody new, it's like, no, 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 no. Don't do it that way. Do it this way, right? Because <laughs> right. this way is going to help us get to that goal quicker, faster. That's why I always exactly. say vet the person you're going to hire. You got to make sure that you have the bloody knees, bloody elbows. You're not teaching theory, Right, because right. theory is different. Because you know you can smell that a mile away. You're like that shit ain't gonna work, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you really have to follow those inklings too. Like that, you like you're saying your gut. Like a part of you knows when you're hiring someone if it's a, if it's the right person for you or not. Right. And I like that's another lesson is like not listening to that intuition, that gut feeling um, when hiring someone and when taking on clients. So there's clients that throw up those red flags, but it's like, but I need to pay the bills this month. Right. But if you'd say yes, right. They're like, it's just not worth it. <laughs> no, right. All money's not good money. All money's not good money. Back yeah, away, back exactly. Away. Right. Yeah. I had that a couple months ago. I'm like, I really like them, but they're chaos. I don't want to work in chaos. Right. Like I was spending yeah, that's my problem. I like I like people. Like I, when I do strategy sessions and I'm meeting someone for the first time, like I'm always so excited about their business and what they're doing, and I like them. And sometimes I still have to say no because I know that what the what they um, like our personalities don't fit, or there's just something that they need that I can't provide because it's not my job. Like it's not right. what I do. Right, not in your wheelhouse. That again, that that's right. staying clear. Like I love that. Like what one specific challenge? I'm good at this. What am I good at? And mm -hmm. do that, and then you can you. Right. There's money all around you, right? It's. I think mm -hmm. we all do that in the beginning of our careers. Like, well, I could do that too, and I could do that too, and I could do that too. Well, I don't like to do that. I don't want to do that. Just because I can do it doesn't mean it's right. good money to to be made. So let's shift just a little bit because you know this is uh, sure. power your profit. And so I love that you only work 20 hours a week and still produce the same result. I love that your family's a priority and you boldly say that, right? Because I think we were, sh my generation, we were shamed if we were like taking care of our kids or you, you could do it all, right? Do it all, be it all, right? Right. Like, yeah, I can't do it all, be yeah. it all. So what, what have you done to build your own personal wealth, right? What's some strategies that you've done to build your wealth you know, for your family and for yourself. Business is one, right? The, I use money of my business to do other wealth strategies. So what have you done? Yep. So um, one of the things that I was fortunate enough to learn early on, um, like back, like in the first two years of my business was the profit first methodology. So just, and it's funny because I, I didn't actually read the book until maybe like a year or two ago, um, but someone just explained the concept to me and I realized I hadn't been paying myself in my business. It was like, I had my business money and that was, that was it. And then I would, um, you know, just deduct whatever I needed out of my account to pay my bills rather than paying myself yes. <laughs> and then allocating what needed to be allocated to the business. Yes. And that was a complete game changer for me in the beginning stages. And now, because now I have, um, you know, I'm saving up for my kids' college. I'm investing in uh, my own retirement and like all of those things. And if I hadn't prioritized paying myself, it is so easy to just keep the money in your business and keep reinvesting and, um, you know, keep just building better, shinier things rather than also making sure that you're taking care of your personal life and you're taking care of the future of your kids and all those things. Um, so I think that's, for me, that was the, one of the biggest turning points and the biggest lessons that I've taken, I've used this entire time in business. Well, and I think when you don't pay yourself, you start resenting the business, right? Unconsciously, you're like, wait, Holly's yeah. Well, you, you, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not just resentment. It's like, you feel like you're failing because mm -hmm. it's like you're bringing in so much money, but if you're not paying yourself, it's like, it's like, you're not making any money. It's you just, you feel like the business is just constantly sucking your resources. Right. And that's one of the things that, um, I, so I have a, a, my trailblazers that I work with long-term. And this is one of the patterns I look for is when we're checking every 90 days, we take a look at where their revenue is and it's like, okay, and how much did you pay yourself this quarter? Right. And we need to make sure that you're, you're paying yourself because most business owners, when they come to me, 
they're they're paying themselves isn't the priority. Growing the business is is the priority, and then reinvesting the business is the priority, which is important to a point. Yes. But at some point, you need to start paying yourself. Like you, it needs to be a profit. You shouldn't be running your business like that for years at a time. Yeah, I have a client that we're just analyzing her business, and she's at two million right now. And I looked at how much she was paying herself. She's paying herself thirty five hundred dollars a month. I'm like, dude. Oh my gosh. You're paying everybody. It's so else. common though. <laughs> right. You're paying your marketing person 10 grand a month. You're paying this other person 12 grand a month. What are you doing? Right. If you're right. the least paid in your business, something's wrong with the model. You know, but sometimes again, you, you have to have somebody look inside and see right. you know, what that. And I think a lot of times it's even just a, a woman mother thing where we're just used to, well, I can survive on this. So I can like, I'm going to do that. And and we don't take more than what we need to survive. Exactly. And I've done it right. I've done that. And same with the profit first. I did that right at the end of the year. I'm like, how did I lose money? I wait, this makes no sense. Cause I didn't have profit first, right? right? I didn't have that strategy in place. This was, you know, 30 years ago. I'm a little seasoned, right? Right. I've been doing this a little, (laughs) a little bit. And so that those are hard <laughs> lessons, right? So if you can get that now, right. and I don't care where your business is, right? If you look at my client, she's doing five million million in sales and only paying herself thirty five hundred dollars a month. I'm like, something's wrong, right? With that, we don't right. want that for you. We want you to be prosperous. Well, the good thing is that that's you know usually a a, a quick fix. Like once yeah. you have that reframe and like plan differently, it's game changing. Right. What do you want to be remembered for? Oh, that's a good question. What do I want to be remembered for? I want to be remembered for, it's going to sound really silly. So the reason why I got into coaching, and this is like the, the thing that I would want to be remembered for is got into coaching because I saw um, a coach for the first time on stage at a, I used to work in a network marketing company and, and we were at a conference and the, the feeling that I had and the feeling that was in the room was just like your dreams were possible. And this was something that I had always known and I'm fortunate to have very supportive parents. And um, so I always like assumed my dreams were possible. Like it didn't, like if I wanted it, I could have it. I just, you know, had to work for it. I did not realize that that was not like the normal way of existing. And that so many people were compromising on what it is they really, really wanted because they didn't think that they could have it or that they deserved it or that it was possible for them. So what I do and why I started doing what I do is I want to help people go after what they really want and have their dreams and have their cake and eat it too. And the way I do that is through like the, the, those nuts and bolts, really practical laying the foundations and um, your business strategy and, and growing your business. Cause for entrepreneurs, our business is the key to achieving all of those things we want and to having the financial and time freedom and um, being able to follow your passions. Like we just have such a huge opportunity. Um, So that's, that's what I, that's what I enjoy doing, doing for people. And that's, that's what I would like to be remembered for. I love that. Me too. That's a juicy one. So what's one question you wish I would have asked that our students would need to know? Yeah. See, I don't, I can't answer those questions. (laughs) That's because okay. because I just I'm going with the flow. I'm not like, man, I wish she'd asked me this question. Right, right. So I yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got something. So I know that you are you come bearing gifts, right? And so yep. what's your gift that you have for us, right? That you would love for our mm-hmm. students to have uh, to support them in figuring out who their ideal qualified client is. What is that? So I have a uh, a PDF that is will help you just reframe the way you look at your marketing. And it's called the buyer's arc. And the buyer's arc is basically the decision-making process that someone goes through when they're looking to hire you or someone else. And um, so the buyer's arc, it breaks down the five different stages of that decision-making process. And then exactly what questions you need to be answering in your marketing and what types of content those questions might be couched in. Um, So whether it be a a blog post, a webinar, like what stages of of the marketing funnel they're in um, so that you can create this like really clean, easy marketing 
sequence that moves someone from just becoming aware of you to buying within like three days. And I have people that come to me never having heard of me before, go on my website and end up buying an $18,000 package within 24 hours. And it's because my, my marketing is aligned with the buyer's arc and they have everything they need to make the best decision for themselves. We all need that. And, and you're being modest. It's 25 pages. It's not like a, just a PDF y'all. Cause sometimes you get stuff and you're like, really? That was it? Yeah. It's no, like it's a, it's like a mini ebook. It's not quite like a book, but <laughs> 25 pages of getting clear, which I love, 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 love the resources, love what you're up to love that you took the time out of your crazy busy day, you know, to spend with us so that our students can drill deeper and have a better understanding. And so how do people find you Holly on social you know, your website is your name, which is Juicy, right? And Chantal, yep. C-H-A-N-T-A-L, right? So if you're just listening yep. to- So hollychantel.com. Um, you can also find me on Facebook, Holly Chantel. I don't know anyone else that has that name, so I'm pretty easy to find. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for everything that you do. I appreciate you and have a wonderful, you're going on holiday, have a wonderful holiday and we look forward to chatting again. Thank you for having me. I hope everyone has an awesome day. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Power Your Profits podcast. Let these building blocks from today's most successful industry leaders equip you with the necessary resources and tools to finally establish the highly profitable business of your dreams. Want to hear more? Listen to more episodes at https colon double slash poweryourprofitspodcast.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the show. Now is your time to rise to the top of your game. So be sure to catch our next episode. Until next time.